Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing well. Recently, on the 19th of January 2024, Palworld dropped on Steam for Windows and Xbox. And since then, it has blown up to ridiculous standards. It has set up for ridiculous records. But that's not the only thing it has done. Since then, as is on the internet, if there is a good thing about something, there is a bad thing about something. Since then, it has been accused of being a copy of Nintendo's best IP, which is Pokemon. And we're going to have a look into this and talk about it. So here we have from PETA, animal rights organization PETA is concerned about cruelty towards animals in the open world game Palworld. It's not animals, it's pals. This game does not have animals. It has fictional creatures. PETA is concerned about violence against fictional creatures. That's when you know they have nothing to do in real life. Okay, if PETA had an option, like if they had two folders, one was humans, another was animals, they would select the human folder, press shift and delete. Okay, these guys would not really hesitate to do something like that. To them, we are the problem. PETA may create a vegan guide for Palworld fans <laughs> who do not want to eat. <laughs> you see, this they have too much time on their hands. Anyways, let's move on. Let's check out the next story. Peter will find out their own way to deal with this. The Pokemon company says plans to investigate copyright claims against the online multiplayer sensation Palworld. This is essential. Pokemon company says it plans to investigate copyright claims. So they are considering what their means are. Why is this a big thing? Because Palworld has blown up. In just like a couple of days, it has completely blown every record they could in the history of records. I mean, if we go to Wikipedia, Palworld has sold over 1 million copies in first eight hours of early access on 19th of January 2024. A million copies in eight hours. That's like every indie developer's dream, which rose to 2 million copies within the first 24 hours. 3 million in 40 hours. 5 million by day three six million by day four seven million by day five eight million by day six that is ridiculous and obviously pokemon is gonna investigate it because technically if they have taken anything from their company assets specifically they have made a killing out of it <laughs> okay they have broken records here. It has also reached 1.8 million concurrent players, leading to server issues. No surprise there. I'm pretty sure they never thought they would hit this kind of number. I am absolutely sure. Even they must be surprised. Whoa, we're so big. On 24th January, it reportedly reached over 2 million concurrent players on Steam, becoming the first game since PUBG to achieve this feat. Since PUBG to achieve this feat. This is a huge, huge thing. Okay. There's also like this uh, part about it, Pokemon on plagiarism controversy which is important shortly after its release users on twitter started noticing similarities in the designs between pal and pokemon with the twitter claiming i honestly am very confused with this whole twitter user because sometimes people call it x sometimes call it twitter i'm just gonna call it twitter with the twitter user claiming to show evidence of plagiarism of the game asset this is very important was there a plagiarism of the game assets and how exactly are you going to prove that because you have to show they have taken the same exact asset and you can't actually show that like i have no idea how to prove that you can't prove that they have taken the same exact asset have, even if you like get it down to the length the bread everything correctly if the assets looks different they are different that's the problem <laughs> that's how the court perceives it that's how law perceives it if something is slightly different different in game assets that's it that's not gonna stand as a case that's actually the truth the ceo of pocket bear stated however the character concepts were mostly designed by a single graduate student hired in 2021 following the company's public recruitment for new illustrators what is pokemon doing i mean they need to find this who this single grad student is and hire him that's 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 that should be their game he also states that game cleared legal reviews i have no idea how you can do that i have no idea how you can do that on 24 january pokemon company issued statement in directly citing the game writing we have received many inquiries regarding another company's game release january 2024 we intend to investigate and take appropriate measures to address any acts that infringe on intellectual properties related to the pokemon pocket pair ceo stated the company has received death threats no surprises there that's internet in a nutshell so yeah, here we have from the article we intend to investigate and take measures any acts that infringe so they are going to look into what basically infringes upon their intellect lecture property rights that's gonna be hard the company has not formally launched legal action against pocket pair they have not done it so far so this is also very important because they want to see like is it worth it is it worth like jumping into and launching proper legal actions against them and they have not done that yet means they are considering it i think they might not do it because it doesn't feel worth it but the problem will come if there's a pal world too okay 
<laughs> that will be the problem for them. Palworld versus Pokemon, how similar are the two games? Before we discuss some of the specific between Palworlds that make fans so upset, it is just as important to understand there are some significant differences between two titles. It's Yeah, it's very essential. Palworld is a survival game. It's branded as a survival game. There are survival mechanics in there. It's extremely similar to Ark Survival Evolved rather than Pokemon, I would say. And it has been mentioned on many occasions. Palworld is an open world survival game that requires you to gather resources, build base, produce items required to overcome various challenges throughout the world. Its emphasis on production and survival mechanic makes it closer to something like Ark Survival Evolved or even Stardew Valley haven't played that than your typical RG focused mainline Pokemon game. The real time combat which revolves around the use of various weapons even feel closer than you would see in Monster Hunter rather than Pokemon. That's true. That's 100% true. Like there are, there's one simple mechanic that has been taken from Pokemon. It's the pals and how to use them, how to capture them, how to raise them, how to make them stronger, how to fight for them. You have a roster of them. Like that is very similar to Pokemon. And there's also like similarities to Arcus Legends, which was an open world 3D game for Pokemon. How do both Pokemon and Pal World ultimately emphasize the same core mechanics, building a roster of creatures you collect throughout the world? Yes, that's the point, leveling them up so you can use them gradually, improving abilities. While Pal World and Pokemon often ask you to utilize those creatures, in slightly different ways. Each game puts those creatures in the center of both their gameplay marketing. Yes, they market those creatures and those creatures look eerily similar to Pokemon. And each game represents those creatures the way you want to interact them in shockingly similar ways. This is like the problem as well, but this is not what works in court. Okay, if you think something is similar, court doesn't care about what's similar. They care about, does it belong to you? 100%. <laughs> like, are you sure? There's, this isn't gonna work. Oh, 60% kind of belongs to me? No. Does it 100% belong to you? They are gonna ask you that. I mean, look at this roster over here. You straight up get the idea, like, how similar they are to all the Pokemons. Like, these look like straight up ripoffs. There was also a video of comparing these two. What is the other one? Luxray or something? With this, I'm gonna try and find it. Okay, here we go. Here are the two designs. This was the thing that went viral, I would say, because of how similar these two are. You can see proportions, same. Size, same. But they are slightly different. That slight difference does actually make sense. In the legal ground, that slight difference does make sense. Very similar, but there is a slight difference. Palworld has been accused of promoting animal cruelty. We already know. One. This is not the first game to do that. That has already been done over min million. This is the point. Can Nintendo sue the Palo Alto developers? They can. Obviously, they can. There's no problem with that. But the fact is, can they win? I would look at this from an outside perspective. Like, I'm going to look at this from straight legal perspective. Nintendo has to prove that they copied their same exact designs. Or, I don't know if the inverse is possible. Pocket Pair has to prove that Pocket Pair has to defend that what they have created is their own. It's one of the two. Like, I feel the defend part would be harder than they have to prove that they have copied their designs. I think Pocket Pair defending in court that what they have created, they own it. If they have to show the process of it, that would be unique to see. But it would be very hard to pin it on. But they've done a good job here. They have actually taken many different assets, combined them together, created something out of it. Have they been creative about it? No. They have already taken stuff that already exists, combined it, made it their own, and they've done a really good job at that. Can you argue? with that no okay here we have dim cotton echoed that logic in an interview with rock paper shotgun in which he stated the designs of the creatures in both game appear to be su sufficiently different from a legal perspective that's the thing right they are sufficiently different enough that you can say yeah this is different that is different but the mechanics are same there's also the thing like can pokemon sue them when they have the same mechanics as us i mean in that case anybody which any game which has a survival mechanics before can save the game after it. They copied our survival mechanics. That's also another thing that I don't understand. Like, how can you do that? The Pal World team may also be protected by extensive parody laws that apply to many aspects of entertainment. To global variations in those laws could impact their ability to rely on such protections. I don't know much about this part. However, it is important to note that this situation is both ongoing and inherently complicated. It is. Nintendo is famously litigious when it comes to protecting their properties. Properties. I mean, these guys are like, you know, they have like this copyright hammer in their hand. If you do anything, they're just gonna bam, bam, copyright. I mean, ask Point Crow, man. <laughs> what did they do to him? They like rain that copyright banner 
copyright hammer on him like every time when he was like showing his mod i think nintendo did something to him based on copyright of legend of zelda i don't know what it was i've forgotten that instance they may have may be able to dig deep enough into palwell designs to find clear evidence of theft that they would need to potentially win a case against pocket bear this is going to be very hard in my eyes for that matter nintendo could use a lawsuit to make things very difficult and expensive for pocket bear if they feel they have enough ground to drag such a thing for a prolonged period. Hmm. There's also the issue of mods. One fan recently tried to release a Pokemon mod for Palworld and has been hit with a copyright takedown from Nintendo. Oh yeah, we know that. That at least shows that Nintendo is very aware of the Palworld situation and willing to pursue legal recourse if they find it, it crosses certain lines. Trust me, if Nintendo wanted, they would have already done it. They are looking at it. This thing has sold 8 million. I'm going to tell you one very simple thing that I think Personally, this is like my opinion. I think what Palworld has essentially done, it has seen a gap in the market and I'm pretty sure they didn't plan it. There is like a gap Nintendo has left in the PC market and Palworld has essentially cashed in on that. They have used their assets, Pokemons and stuff, brought them, changed them and straight up sold them on platforms Nintendo doesn't and cashed them in because Nintendo sells everything on Switch. They have everything exclusively for Switch. They don't sell it for anything else. And that's the thing, right? Because the audience most likely must be that starved about a Pokemon game that they took it. Now, they couldn't blatantly copy the entire Pokemon game. And there are games who have already done something like this. They have blatantly copied the Nintendo IP completely. I'm not going to name them, but those games are still alive and existing. They just have different names, but they're essentially Pokemon. Those games are still existing. I mean, you can just go and search like Pokemon like games and you're going to see like a blatant copy looks like. Had Palworld been an obvious copy of Pokemon that utilized clearly stolen assets, it would have been shut down before this ever became more than one day story. That's actually the truth. If they had like straight up copied Pokemon, this game would be shut down. So it's been done pretty cleverly. So far, it isn't that. Had Palworld been bombed upon its release, it's doubtful any of us would be talking about the game right now. I mean, it has completely blown up. That's one of the reasons we're talking about it. Instead, it has proven to be one of the most surprisingly successful games in the year which fuels up the debate that's the thing like it's just blown up and i think that should have been kind of expected there's an audience for pokemon like right now it has been proved there is an audience for it but this game has not just cashed in on pokemon this game has cashed in on arc survival evolved as well its mechanics as well and uh, the only way they could sell pokemon is by doing something else with it they added the survival mechanics made the game much more interesting and much more fun and now you basically can play pokemon on pc is Palworld an obvious attempt to exploit the popularity of Pokemon produced by developers with a questionable history of copyright class, classic trade ch trend chasing? So they have done this before. Apparently their game, Craftopia, is considered a copy of Breath of the Wild. But then again, I consider Genshin Impact a copy of Breath of the Wild, okay? But that is also substantially different enough. This game is sufficiently different enough. Is Palworld a game eternally stuck somewhere in the middle where they will force people to discover where they draw a line between inspiration and imitation in, the, in, in entertainment. This is such a great line. Like, how do you draw that line in the first place? How do you draw that line between imitation and inspiration? How do you know? And it cannot be the same everywhere. Like, assume there is an artist who has drawn an apple. He has painted that apple and I decide, you know what? I feel so inspired from that. I'm going to draw an apple. And I draw a design that looks eerily similar to that design. Do you think people are going to like my drawing or they're going to call me like a plagiarist? They say I've plagiarized his design. I have plagiarized his art. But in a very simpler sense, that's not going to work in a game. In a game, you can copy other games' assets, edit them slightly, and put them out as your own, and it won't feel that different. That's actually the truth. How do you draw this line between in inspiration and imitation? I actually would love to know that. In writing, it's pretty simple. You just see somebody has copied what you're writing completely and without arranged something like arranged words around you know that's plagiarist but if they have capability of writing themselves and they take something from you they're gonna take the small thing and expand it on big thing i remember this uh when 
what, what was that? I think it was some kind of writing competition back at school days that I participated. Like my dad made me participate. And there was this guy who was given a line and he had to make a small paragraph story about it. And he did it so well that that line felt completely disconnected from the story. He had taken inspiration, but his entire story came out of that inspiration. So then there was a guy sitting next to him who had sort of copied his story, but it was also different enough that you could say that is his own story. But he was sitting next to him. That was the point, right? If he wasn't sitting next to him, people wouldn't say like he copied his story, but essentially he had copied his story. <laughs> And that's the thing, in entertainment, this line is very odd to draw. There is parodies, there is spoofs, and these things just copy like, main things completely and try to make a joke out of it sometimes. So inspiration and imitation, this is actually like uh, the line I actually <laughs> rate. How do you know that they were inspired by Pokemon Ark Survival Evolved? And how do you know they did not just imitate it? That is very essential. Whatever happens, Pal World is shaping up to be an unlikely turning point in the gaming history. That's also true because now Pal World has independent studio. It has gotten from this point to that point in the faraway distance. Now, a lot of developers will start thinking, wait, if I don't design the sets from scratch, I mildly copy from other and edit them to a certain extent. I can use those assets. I don't really need to design those assets. As long as I have a great concept in my mind, I don't really need to build assets. I can take somebody else's assets and edit them as their own. Leave it to them. Leave it to them. They're gonna like prove how I copied it. How, how do they know I copied it? So this is very essential. How are you going to prove that somebody copied your assets? I think the only way they could prove like this is by somehow making Pocketware, the developer behind Palworld, defend themselves that the assets they have created, they have created them instead of stealing them. So here we go. Here's what is my opinion regarding all this. I think, I think they have definitely stolen the assets from Pokemon, but they have delivered a ridiculously good product out of it. And that's also the thing. They have the gap that Nintendo left in the market with Pokemon games for not PC. That's also the gap that Palworld has basically essentially cashed on. And they've done a good job at it. How this will turn out, I have no idea, but I think it will be hard to prove it in court, but the question is, is Nintendo gonna go all in or the Pokemon company is gonna go all in and cash on it? Maybe they try to buy the studio or something, who knows? Anyways, that's all I wanted to talk about. Remember to like, dislike, subscribe, comment what you feel about this story because I think this is like a new trend now. I definitely think this is gonna take off. A lot of independent studios are now gonna cash in on this and try to do a lot of things similar to what Palworld has done. Anyways, see you next time. Goodbye.